Adil Hussain, I welcome you to Times Network. It's great seeing you and I must thank you. Double thanks for joining me at such a short notice. Thank you so much. Thank you, Vicky. Just, I, Always a pleasure to speak to you. Just called you in the afternoon and <laughs> you said, yes, you're ready. I had been ready, yes, you had, because we had been talking about it for some time now. So, yes, I'm ready. <clears throat> so, tell me, Adil, what's up? What's happening in Delhi? Kya kar rahe aap wahan? Wahan rehte hai aap, yes, but what's going on in your life at the moment? Um, lo bahut kuch. There are uh, lots of scripts that I have to finish reading and each script is like 120, 25 pages long. So, I'm a slow reader and it takes a lot of time to finish reading and some scripts which are very, very uh, boring. Some are very interesting. Some are, you know, ordinary. So uh, to get past 10 pages is sometimes quite difficult. But then if I don't want to do it, what do I tell the writer director who sent me the script without reading the whole script. So I have to finish reading the whole script and tell them what I feel about it. So that's one of the most uh, time consuming work for me when I am not shooting. And um, apart from that, we are just building a workspace for me to work in terms of my physical vocal practice. After a certain age, if you don't visit the basics of your craft then i i know that it's sort of uh, it it becomes a bit blunt it needs to be sharpened and kept uh, alive uh, in its best possible form so i'm practicing that uh, we are making a workspace upstairs where we live so that it's soundproof and i don't bother the neighbors <laughs> and that is happening and apart from that my mom She's uh, almost 95 years old, so I keep visiting her in Assam and spending time with family, uh, cooking, uh, meeting friends. Yep, all that is happening. It's a lot. So you've never been tempted to shift to Bombay? I mean, of course, you've been doing global cinema, if I am right uh, in using that term here. But uh, have you been not tempted to shift to Mumbai where, you know, you are in the hub of Producers, directors. Um, it it just didn't didn't happen. I had been asked this question several times, and my answer had always been uh, very similar. But if you ask me now, after all these years, I was never tempted. Not only never tempted, I never felt like as well. Uh, I somehow felt that. The kind of films that I want to do, I would rather, I would probably be approached by them uh, no matter where I am. And uh, that had been happening since the first film and till today. So why should I uproot myself from a place where I'm very comfortable? The house is on the edge of uh, a forest here uh, in Delhi. So um, I don't need to do that. And these days, as you and I sit in two different towns and cities and we are communicating, uh, you know, and it just take two, takes two hours for me to reach Bombay. And there are actually lots of flights to Bombay. So it doesn't matter. And quite often the films I do are shot in different parts of the country and the world. So you just need an need an airport which is close to your town. That's all I probably need. You have a very unique taste in uh, selecting your movies. Uh, but you're telling me that you read every script and even sort of if you know that you're not going to do it, you're not liking it, you reach the end uh, page. I mean, that's quite a thing because I don't think that 99% of the actors must be reaching the last page if they have at any point, whether on the page 1 or on page 10 or on page 25, they decided that, okay, this is not working for me. 
Um, that also happens to me, but not always, not often. That happens to me when I find it extremely not working for me. Uh, but quite often, most of the scripts which are sent to me are, uh, they know what kind of films I do or I like. That is sort of a, a reputation for some reason had preceded me to them and, you know, it had reached them. So they know uh, my taste, uh, thankfully. <laughs> Otherwise, I also receive a lot of scripts which are interestingly pretty much, you know, adult content because uh, of my uh, of my role in parts. Because they think, oh, Adil has done one, you know, uh, uh, what do you call that? One scene which is um, pretty as in Bombay language, bold and all that. Uh, probably he's uh, willing to do many bold scenes, but they don't realize that the content of the film has to support that. So those films, but not, not many, they come as well. But I realize instantly, like one time I realized that this is, there's a producer from Singapore, Indian guy, who sent me the photograph of the of the heroine, I'm like, and you know, in very minimal clothes, I'm like, why is he sending me? <laughs> so, uh, and then they send me the script. So, to respect also them, I said, okay, send me the script. Then you read one or two pages, then you realize, okay. So, I, I gently tell them that, sorry, thank you so much. You know, very kind of you to think of me, but it's not working for me. So uh, it is a very interesting and uh, also very intriguing what people think, you know, about other actors or actors, those who are producers, those who have got money, how they perceive uh, my participation in all these films that I have done. And they have a view about me that what would Adil probably agree to do which is a very interesting study in itself, uh, in hum human uh, psychology. So I enjoy that also to some extent. <laughs> Why I asked you that question, you read till the very end, because you said that you read till the very end to give an uh, explanation to them that why you're not doing it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, uh, this yeah. also so is quite unique in some ways, because I don't think most actors go to the extent of giving the right explanation or giving the honest explanation to the director. You know, they may make some excuse or... Yeah, no, I do as well. I'm not unique in that way. But if the director is truly... Like, for example, I'll give you one example of one of the scripts. And it came to me and I found it, I found it extremely verbose. Um, and I'm very fond of non-verbal cinema. Uh, they're not too much talking. Uh, but at the same time, I have seen great verbose films as well, made in, you know, in different parts of the world. Um, so uh, I, I give it a go, like, okay, let's see where it goes. And then after 15 to 20 pages, I realize, oh my God, you know, it's making sense. And then you see certain nuances, which I think there is a potential for this particular script to, to become a better, better script. So then I read the whole thing and I have a chat with the director. I ask the director, always point blank, are you ready for my brutal, honest, but gentle criticism? <laughs> you know, and they say, yes, sir. And definitely I'm, I, I somehow find a way to make them help them confess that do you really, uh, are you really asking for it? Or you are just telling me, you know, to make me feel good about it. And when they are ready, I tell them that these are the, or I don't know how to write a script, so I cannot tell you what to mend, but I can tell you that these are the points, these are the points that didn't work for me. And if you work on it, if you really want me, then please do come back to me, uh, incorporate what I am looking for. And 
it happened with at least two to three scripts, like one of them now in its third year, like we're going back and forth. And he's adamant to get to 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 adamant to get me into the film. And I'm 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 very uh, I feel very touched and honored that oh my god, you know, somebody is at it. So and I'm I'm then uh, ethically, morally, emotionally invested in that. Uh, we didn't even talk about budget. We didn't even talk about money. It's because of the work and the dedication this director has. So it is almost in the last stages. Uh, he's now looking for some money, and I'm like, yeah, let's do it. So I give them benefit of doubt quite often. Uh, if I see, if I smell, and if I intuit a kind of a potential. So quite often, those are the scripts. They come to me, and I try to finish till the end. Yeah. You come across filmmakers who said, I don't want your opinion. Take it or leave it. Um, there are filmmakers. They don't speak to me like that because of my gray hair, I guess. Uh, you know, there are filmmakers, they will send you a scene and I'm like, no, 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 I need to read the whole script. But nowadays I've seen also those filmmakers, who are ex those who are very well known and uh, they generally do not give, do not like to give scripts. They are giving me scripts, um, which is very heartwarming for me that, okay, they trust me that, okay. You know, and th that also shows that uh, there is a willingness intensity of willingness to work with me and um, and I of course let them know that I do not like to work in any film unless I read the script a full script if Ang Lee can share his script you can share his own script you know please saying things as it is has landed you in trouble a classic yes. case classic case in point is That's... the recent uh, you know controversy which you had to deal with when you yes. said you regret <laughs> doing Nabeer Singh. Now, first yes, I said, I that you didn't know anything about what is happening in the totality of the product. Kya hai? It's that film, that unique case that I just thought, okay, come on, let's do it, you know. There was a there was an issue with my schedule, time, and their dates. Uh, my deterrent was that I will ask five times the price, and I thought they would say no. And for some reason, they decided to say yes, and then I got trapped. And it's my fault, as I said to some other people, that is totally, totally my fault uh, that I am in the film. It's nothing to do with uh, the director or the producer. My manager even, because he tried to convince me that it's okay, it's a good film. You know, it has been a big hit. I'm like, yeah, I know, but I would like to do this. They sent me the film as well. The 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 original. And I didn't have time to watch it. For, so I was traveling cross country. Uh, sorry, not cross country only. Cross, I was inter doing my intercontinental travels because of my, um, what do you call them, uh, the festival travels, some release somewhere in South Korea. I was in San Francisco. I came back and all those things happened. And then I landed up in Bombay. I thought, okay, I will read at least once. I read the scene. I will see the film at least two days before. It just didn't happen. And I did it. And that happened to be this film, <laughs> you know, out of all films that I did. And I was like, oh my God, what have I done? This was the only film yeah. where you didn't read the script. Yeah. So so where did you see it? You saw it in a the theater? Or did you have a... I, in, in Delhi, in Delhi, no. In Delhi, I went with one of my very dear friends, a journalist friend of mine. And uh, so I thought, okay, let's go and see the film. I know it's a commercial film. And my expectations for a commercial film is like, you know, a commercial film, and you don't have any kind of, a, a, mm. you know, uh, what do you call that? Um, uh, I'm not expecting anything subtle or anything nuanced. But after 20 minutes of it, I was like, oh, my God. So I looked at my uh, friend. I said, okay, let's go. He said, yeah, I think we should go. So we both just, I couldn't.
him off. Yeah. In Delhi, that happened in Delhi, in select city walk. So your issue was with the film was uh, similar to what uh, many critics had. I mean, they say they termed it as misogynistic and they termed it as promoting patriarchal uh, mindset. Yeah. Absolutely, yes. Yeah. But the maker didn't take it kindly when you said that. Sandeep Reddy. Yeah, was... I was in. Yeah, I was. I was. I got the news. I was. I woke up at seven thirty in the morning. I was in Austin, in Texas, and uh, from Times of India, someone called me. I don't know. Did you call me or someone else called me? I think uh, a woman. Uh, I forgot her name. So I woke up at seven thirty in the morning, and it was probably late night, um, Texas and Indian dif time difference. And she asked me a question. I'm like, what? What happened? <laughs> I was like, I had no clue what's going on in India. I said, no, Mr. Vanga. I said, Vanga, why? What did I? And this interview, which we saw, was recorded five months back. So I forgot even that. And they had released it recently. Mm -hmm. I mean, so I was like, what did I say? Then I went back to the interview and saw that. Uh, and I think it came out as one of the, that particular part came out as the reels, which I'm not very familiar with. And then I was like, oh, okay, okay. He got, he got angry. And I think, as I said before, I think, you know, he has all the right to get angry and say whatever he wants to say. It's a free country. I don't have to react to it. I just told, I think, the, the journalist when she called me that I think um, I stand by my comment because I truly felt that this uh, film promoted or glorified misogyny, which I had fought since the time I became aware of misogyny uh, and patriarchy in my life. And I fought with myself. It's not that I fought with somebody else. I grew up in a misogynist house. I grew up in a patriarchal house. My father's words were the best words. And I grew up in a patriarchal society. And when I came to know about it, I had to really fight very hard about my ingrained condition of misogyny, that I am, you know, I am the I'm superior. And it took me uh, years uh, to, to, to decondition myself. Uh, emotionally, you see, intellectually, we all know it's not. It's not right. It's not how come fifty percent of our population on Earth can be lower than me? You know that the males, male species, would say or feel or think that I am. You know, we are a better species. Uh, we know intellectually, we read all that, but when it comes to emotions and actual practice of your intellectual understanding in life. Then we uh, feel, uh, especially with me, I can't talk about you or anybody else. Um, I know a few friends that they know it, but still it shows in their behavior, my behavior, you know, how difficult it is to, to emotionally accept it and to decondition your emotional, uh, emotional uh, body uh, to, to truly, truly uh, walk your talk. So... That was my problem. So it is not that this film. I'm 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 fighting it, fighting it with myself. It's a personal battle, and uh, in the society, I fought it. I fought it against my dad, uh, her his behavior towards my my mom, and I fight it when I see amongst my friends. And uh, yeah, has it's a long battle. You, has that landed you in uh, ugly arguments? Quite often, quite often. What do you think? Why not? And all that. Then I give them reasons. Like I had a, I had a fight with my dad and I told my dad uh, point blank. I told him that, uh, Baba, that what you did for me, uh, you, you looked after me, you earned the money and you gave me so much, you know, you, you gave me the knowledge and, you know, so many things. But my mom could have done it easily. But what my mom did for me, you can never... Do it for me because you're not even biologically equipped. You see, you don't have breasts. You cannot conceive me. You cannot even, you don't have the tenderness and the generosity and tolerance to keep me, you know, in your bosom and feed me and look after me. And I was, I was, 
I was uh, breastfed for six years. So I, I, and my mom is now 95. I just came back yesterday. And I was lying on her bosom yesterday, day before yesterday, till I left for the airport. And I can see the that she's still worried about me and she can't speak properly. She's still, have you had, have you had food? You know, have you had? So that kind of ingrained generosity and and grace and 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 this extreme intensity of wanting to take care of your offspring the women the 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 female race has it we don't have it in in the male so no matter how much we fight and we think you know physical prowess that we have it is all brute force i i would say they are more powerful than than us I would argue that brute force is powerful, like um, like uh, I call that um, you know blunt, aggressive, rudimentary human behavior. The better qualities of a human being are compassion and love and empathy and grace and you know respect and tolerance and uh, all these are potential human. Um, I would say that um, the the best of the human qualities that all the greatest um, teachers of India, the great masters of India, had propagated, and those are prevalent. Those are prevalent in women naturally, and so we and we have rudimentary power of brute forces. So that way, I I consider them probably him way more. Uh, you know, way better than uh, male race. So I, I, uh, this. So when my, I told my dad, and uh, he, he, he kept quiet. He said, uh, "You have a point." And I said, "Yeah, I do have a point, Papa. That you are not superior to my mom. Never think about. It. Don't even dare to think like that." How was your relationship? So fighting, fighting with uh, somebody else or anybody, the director of the film, Mr. Vanga. Um, is is like uh, you know, it's it's just it's normal if I have to, but I don't want to. There is no fight with me. It is my fault that I'm in his film, so there is no question of blaming him for it. I just gave my opinion about the film and uh, my relationship with my dad. You wanted to ask, yeah, yeah. Uh, it over the years it uh, it evolved to a very gentle and lighter relationship. In the beginning. As probably any, any father-son relationship always had certain tension with my choice of subjects that I love to practice in terms of art. Um, he, he loved art. His fear was probably how would I look after myself financially. Uh, so he didn't speak to me for quite some time. But later he he saw that, oh, it's a, this guy has... You know, my son, our son. He never said our son. He always said my son. Though he has got very little contribution to my biological existence, we have the habit of calling my son, you know, the father's. I think it's more of a her son than my son. <laughs> um, so he, um, we became, we became sort of friends at the, towards the end of his life. Yeah. He died at the age of, 91, 92. Yeah. Mr. Vanga said that he regrets casting you. And uh, it is his film who made you famous. <laughs> what do I say to that? I think there are a lot of replies to that comment came from my uh, came from people, those who love my film. And uh, if he's more famous than Ang Lee and and uh, I don't know what to say, you know. So very unfortunate that uh, he thinks like that. Uh, but he has got a, he has got right. His this film did a lot of a uh, lot of box office uh, collection. So probably he thinks like that. Then I don't know the exact figures of Kabir Singh, but um, Life of Pi collected almost a billion dollars. So that is like six, seven thousand crore. Uh, I don't think he can compete with that. <laughs> that is something that he should have thought about it before he said it. 
did you see his uh, venture animal starring Ranbir Kapoor? Uh, not at all. No, I saw the Taylor, and uh, I, I just, I don't think that's my kind of film that I'd go and watch it now. Did your friends see it? Did your relatives see it? What did they tell you about it? Um, it must my have been friend... a conversation because that film is something which uh, uh, aroused or generated a conversation in every drawing room. Yeah, I saw the I saw the controversy. A lot of people talked about it. I think Javed Javed Saab had talked about it or something like that. I remember. I generally what I do, Vivek uh, Vicky, is that. I when I see those controversies, I have so many other things to do in my life. You know, I rather look at uh, uh, some Instagram post to find some recipe to cook for my son, uh, then and or spend time reading about somebody else's controversy. I do not have the luxury, and neither I have the mentality. But I definitely am aware that certain. Uh, exchanges have happened between some people and uh, his him about the animal about the film animal and few of my friends saw it uh, some of them probably said that okay the craft was much better than Kabir Singh but they did not agree with the with the with the line of an artistic um, um, philosophy of the film that's what I heard, yeah. But I will definitely never watch that film. Um, but maybe when it comes, has it come already on the on OTT? I think it has come, right? Mm. I don't know if I can uh, if I can make myself see it. But I think somehow sometimes I feel I should be able to see it. I have to make myself a little more compassionate so that I can see and. Find out what is it that uh, that is people are talking about, but that time is very precious for me, and there's so many, so much of great content which are available on the net, you know, in so many different platforms, right from movie to to you know, so many platforms are there, so, and I have a hard drive full of films which had been curated by my acting teacher since nineteen. 19- Films from 1936 till today. So, and little time between to be with my family. I I find it very uh, difficult to spend some time with films that I know I will not finish it. Uh, so, yeah. What we were given to believe from a certain interview, I think, uh, of Sanjay Gupta, the director. He was doing an interview uh, with a journalist and I happened to see it and he said that after the animal people have rather the filmmakers have started taking the violence uh, in such a way that probably now we'll have to raise it to that level of animal because animal has set a sort of a benchmark so he may not have used these exact words but what he meant was somewhat this a couple of them were having a discussion among themselves uh, on that. Uh, how do you see that trend? I mean, um, of course, it's not essential that it will happen, but uh, you know the herd mentality in uh, Bollywood, uh, how it is. Ek picture chal gai to dher saare log khade ho jate hain line mein wahi same bana ne. This is a good question. Um... I somehow, how do I say? Um, there are a lot of films that I saw. Recently, I saw a film, Japanese film, uh, very old, 1935, 30, sorry, 1942 film. I forgot the name. I'll get you, get you the name. I'll text you later. There was violence there as well, uh, quite a lot of violence. But at the end of the film, the violence is not is doesn't remain with you. What remains with you is a sense of lightness, and it gives you enough 
emotional, intellectual reasons to stay away from violence. You see, for me, art does should not be restricted to oh, don't show violence or show violence or don't don't should not have any sexual content content or should have sexual content. If the intent behind a film is to uplift your uplift the consciousness, if I can be brave enough to say consciousness because it's a esoterical world mm -hmm. uh, to to help um, humanity to look at their lives to find more meaning uh, what they do how they do why they do and to help them ease their misery you know, which is in self inflicted misery about in terms of worries and you know all kinds not to see the the basic argument from the films which are uh, made with intent to escape from the reality. Escape never helped because where would you escape? <laughs> no, I have to escape for some time. No, you cannot escape because we are designed, the nature has designed our society and our world in such a way that you can never escape from the reality. It will catch, it will catch you. It catches up no matter how wealthy you are, no matter how poor you are, no matter how equipped or secured you are in every sense, it comes and catches you even at the age of 80 or 90, you know, if not earlier. So one of the one of the one of the reasons that I practice art, which has definitely evolved over the years, I'm not saying from the beginning, that I would like to participate in a practice of art or films or theater, whatever I do, or even a conversation like you and I are having. It must reflect my core intent, why I do what I do. And films, for me, are a very powerful, is a very powerful medium. And we must be very responsible how we use it. To earn money is absolutely fine, because we all must live and, you know, live well, comfortably, definitely. But if the core intent is to earn, money, then I would dare say that go and do some other business, you know, do open a petrol pump, do some other business, because films are very powerful. They change the worldview of people. They change how they look at themselves. They change. It is extremely penetrative to even for elderly people, not even only for the you know, impressionable adolescent uh, population. So it is very powerful. And I would like to record myself in those films which is made with the intent of looking at life and to find the nuances and not participate in binaries. So uh, violence is one of the most um, volatile aspect of rudimentary behavior of hum human beings. And when you are using violence with the intent of getting more people on the uh, in the cinema halls, then I would say that is something that you're doing that is dangerous for the society. Very dangerous for the society. That you are encouraging violence as a as a as a cure or as a as a as a what do you call that as a as a place to rest as a place to go to which is the most rudimentary behavior of human beings and the opposite should be could be the intent no not violence but conversation understanding of subtle tender things and loving things and compassionate things empathetic things you know those are the higher qualities human being so yeah that's my view about violence the intent behind using the violence to fill your to cater to the rudimentary and very easily stirrable aspects of human being which is violence and sexuality and you know to tease them it's very easy to tickle that aspect Sri Aurobindo calls it the lower movements 
Yeah. Would you have done animal? Had it come to you? Directors? Oh, not at all. Never. Directors never. Even if, they, even if they have paid me 100, 200 crores, I would never do it. You would have asked for a script, I'm saying, especially having done Kabir Singh without reading oh, it. Yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> not only ask for a script, I would have like made them sign that not a single you know, word can change. <laughs> the script could be, you know, you go to the go to the set and you keep changing things. No way, no way. Did it happen with your scenes in Kabir Singh that changes were made? On no, the no, not at all. My scene was intact. I love the scene I did. I, I think it's very written well, and it's a good scene. So I enjoyed doing that scene. I really enjoyed. It. Right. So, you know, you say that you uh, want to give some sort of a uh, message to the society, though not these exact words you said, but you don't want to see something or do something uh, rudimentary human behavior. Now, uh, what happens uh, sometimes is you get films which are purely for entertainment. Purely for entertainment. Uh, say, uh, you know, when we were growing up, there was a film called Amar Akbar Anthony. Now, if you're offered a film like that, or if you're offered a film like, uh, say, maybe, uh, which is uh, pure entertainment. See, entertainment has no problem. I mean, please get entertained. Um, I would also participate in an entertaining. I did Bell Bottom. I did, you know, Force 2. I did... Um, what is called uh, the other other sum to uh, forgot the name. Um, I did good news, pure entertainment, you know. But how far do you take that? And what are the issues that you're talking about? You know, how does it impact the impact the society? It's it's funny. I did Molia. You know, it's amazing, entertaining place. A French playwright, Indian playwright, for example. Uh, a very entertaining play that I did called, oh, that's also written by Brecht, a uh, German playwright, uh, Three Penny Opera. Uh, there were so many wonderful plays. And it, I have no problem with entertainment. I did a film called, which has gotten 8 million views on YouTube, called Z Plus. It's very entertaining. But also it is uh, a telling story of the of the political situation in the country. See, entertainment can be cheap or entertainment can be deep. You know, it could be deep entertainment, like Life of Pi is a deeply entertaining film. It made one almost a billion dollars. It cannot make billion dollars unless it had been entertaining in some way or the other. Even in a place like Guwahati, where Hollywood films do not run more than one week, it ran for five weeks. You know, without any star, there were no stars in the film, apart from Ang Lee. Mm. Nobody was known, you know. In India, yes, uh, Irfan was known a little bit then. Tabu was definitely very known. But across the globe, there was nobody who were known. You know, the main actor is a newcomer. That was my third film. Irfan was not really known at that time in 2012 so much that he was known later. And Tabu was not known internationally except for she did one film, which is uh, Namesake. So there was no star in that film. But the film became the star. The story, the story became the star. I'm not asking, asking to uh, make boring films. I would not watch a boring film myself. But to engage people, if you understand, you know the craft of filmmaking, uh, one of my teachers says very beautifully, vultures are extremely crafty bird. You know, they have such skills. They can detect, you know, where, what is rotten, wherever from high up in the, in the, in the, in the sky. But they always look at the lowest, the lower, lower, lowest depth of humanity, the caracas, you know, the dead bodies. So even if you have skill, like Netflix and Amazon and most of the um, OTT platforms are filled with dark content because it sells so easily. That's 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 
bothersome for me, you know? Because if you have the craft and you're using that craft, like for example, a nuclear bomb, the nuclear power you can use for creating energy or you can use use it to, you know, uh, to bomb somebody or make a lethal poison to poison somebody, uh, you know? So you have the craft and the skill, make films which, 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 which uplifts people. Mm. I'm not saying messaging. I'm bored with messages. Give me nuances. Give me meaning. Help me to rediscover my existence in this amazingly complex world. You know, my relationship with myself, with my parents, with my society, with my with my country, with the other countries and universe at large, with nature. Give me. You have the skill. Do some harder work. Make films like Life of Pi. I'm not saying the same story. I'm just saying, you know, with such depth and such uh, nuances that people, you want to earn money, earn it and earn it well. You know, don't go the cheap way. If you want to go the cheap way, go and do something else. Don't make films. That's a humble request, actually. <laughs> you know, these films, uh, many of them... Uh which you are talking about, uh, say, saying that, uh, you know, uplift people, etc., are termed as art films in Adam. Life of Pi is not an art film. I know, I know. but I'm saying... Nor is things... English Winglish. Nor is English Winglish. Yeah, definitely not. But I'm saying, no. does that bother you? Uh, I'm uh, once again referring to Mr. Vanga's comment that you have done 30 films and 30 art films. And... Uh, <laughs> My film gave you the... I don't think... Yeah, no, I don't think... Uh, I know what he said. I read that bit, at least, that he thinks... Uh, I don't think he has any uh, substance in that sentence at all, whatsoever. Hmm. He was angry, he said. It's, it's a reactive reactive comment uh, on my on my, on my my statement. I, I, I don't think I should take it seriously. But the art films term tabhi bhi use hota tha pehle. Jab, uh, say, for example, uh, Smita Patil, Shabana Azmi, Sham Benigil, Govind Nilani, Nasiruddin Shah ki jo films itne saare chale, uh, bhoati chale, aur bhoati achhe films the, wo tab bhi hum use karte the wo, ki ye art film hai, ye commercial ki. Uh, that, I don't think, does, I don't... That, does, that, does, that, does that sometimes trouble you even now? Not at all, why? Why art? Art is a word that I, I, I. That's my oxygen, you know. Uh, so film could be films or it could be art. You see, for me, a dancer is a dancer or an actor is an actor. To call the dancer or an actor to actor an artist, he or she has to earn it. I am a cook, you know. If I want to become an artistic cook, I have to. I have, to, I have to earn it. I have to follow the fundamental laws of art. And fundamental laws of art is, for me, is that it, it appreciates the beauty of existence. It appreciates the complexity of existence. Existence means not only human condition, but all existence. It appreciates and sees the depth and complexity and the vistar and the vastness of existence. And a human created, like for example, natural beauty uh, is say a tree, you know. But we human beings, we do, we create a bonsai. So bonsai is man-made. That's art. And otherwise, there is there are amazing trees which are equally beautiful. But we have ingrained tendency to to understand ourselves, to appreciate the beauty of art. So we try to create a bonsai. So films are the bonsais of life, you know, bonsais of not only my life, but life of the history of humanity. It depends upon what kind of films you are, uh, what is the subject of the film, of course. So when we are making, giving our lives and energy and money and the intent, core intent is to appreciate the complexities and finding meaning and asking questions 
uh, why are we doing what we are doing? Why are we here? You know, all kinds of difficult questions. And and also at the same time, uh, questioning the contrast of life. Some people, you know, night and day and poor and uh, poor and rich and all kinds of contrasts and oppositions that we are constantly faced with. These are philosophical questions, social questions, political questions, uh, economical questions, and fun <clears throat> as well at the same time. So I'm not asking someone to sacrifice fun in order to become an artist and a boring artist, I do not, I'm not in that camp of to make a film and get bored. No, of course not. You see, but at the same time, there is a, there is a, uh, having said all that, there is a phenomenon called rasik. You see, you, if you are a filmmaker, and you are making a film only to only for yourself to watch. And then, oh, I'd like my mom to watch as well. And I like the person who comes to help me house, help me in the house, you know, cooks for me. I would like her or him to watch as well. How is it possible for me to incorporate them as well? If that is the intent, then at the same time, you have an extreme sense of craft of filmmaking and a responsibility towards creating something which will be seen, watched, tasted, heard by amazing uh, spectrum of people, then you will end up making something which is, uh, you know, which is uh, worthy of uh, yourself and also worthy uh, for the time of the people, those who are watching. You're basically helping people to become rasik. Then you are slowly bringing them to taste the nuances, you know? Like, for example, the tea tasters. You and I cannot become tea taster. I'm drinking tea, and there's a mix of, you know, beautiful Assam tea that my friend who is a manager in the tea garden has sent it to me. And and he, he would hire a tea taster who he has to pay crores because he or she would decide the, this is the price of the tea. So that, to reach there, we have a lot of time in India. Like, for example, my film, um, when I say my film, I'm one of the actors in the film called uh, What Will People Say is a Norwegian film, and which was the Norwegian submission for Oscars in 2018. And I got the Norwegian um, uh, National Award for Best Actor in 2018. That film, it ran in Norway for six months. And I doubt it will run for a day here as well. So that's what I'm saying, that that film is meant to for the Norwegian uh, taste. Now I'm saying there are, there are more skilled directors who would also make sure that same subject, same theme, same story, same plot can be also watched by Indians and the American audience. That means we lack the skill, we lack the craft to do that. So when we bypass the craft, when we do a shortcut, okay, we have to return the money to the producers. So we will do this, 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 this. No, don't. Do something else. You know, use the same amount of money and go to go to stock market. Please buy something, you know. Don't come to film industry and ruin the taste or uh, ruin the taste of common mass. You are responsible for their taste, their idea of life, their idea of uh, uh, man's, their idea of what uh, what women are, you know, their, what they are feeling or thinking about themselves. Please don't, you know, that's not fair on because you are very powerful with the money and the and the craft and the medium of expression that you have what are you using this for you are you are supposed to be art creators so i find it a bit quite often when i think about it i feel very very disturbed but again i'm like i'm very optimistic i'm like okay fine one day i hope we will change. i don't hear the word art creators in the industry i just hear we are content creators 
unfortunately so yeah how many people how many filmmakers in the country has actually gone to art school you see what i mean so it's like giving you i'm giving a weapon to all those who are going to indiscriminately use it Adil. so uh, huh yeah go on sorry no so it's a matter of concern also at the same time i feel that evolution is a very slow process and it's a, giving birth to a very high high uh, end uh, society not in terms of wealth at all i'm just you know i'm just in terms of evolution and uh, the the awareness of coexistence with the nature with others with different classes of people with different intellect of people uh, and with the fundamental sense of equality uh, respecting each other you know it is it's a birthing process it's a very painful process it's like samudra manthan you know then first things will come out which are not very pleasant and so i'm optimistic maybe after like 200 years after i die my our son you know our our, our children your children uh, or their great children or grand <laughs> will will have some sort of a society where art is practiced abundantly anywhere in the world yeah it has been a very very engaging conversation adil looking forward to chatting with you again yeah. and thank you so much thank you pleasure pleasure vicky pleasure thank you